Ahoy, sailors and stowaways. Today we're looking at a re-release of a 10-year-old treasure. Paolo Mori's Libertalia, originally a 2012 game, finds new life in this half-reprint, half-upgraded version from Stonemaier Games, who sent us this review copy. We'll be gazing out over the high seas, looking to see who can make the most profit over their long journey with a crew of random roustabouts. Let's dive in. Past the sky blue box art, we will find the game's board, double-sided for your pleasure, and both the main rulebook and solo rules guide tucked neatly in front of the plastic box divider. Of note, the rulebook has a full-page publisher's note in the back that lists out the changes to this version over the 2012 original. Past that, we'll see the insert, which neatly houses the graveyard treasure tracker and playing cards for each of the six player colors. Quickly, look at these adorable animal characters. I love them. Anyway, the center channel keeps the bag of loot tokens in place, as well as the cards for the solo variant alongside the wooden reputation trackers and cardboard coins. Overall, the box has a lot of thought put into it and will serve the proper vertical orientation on your shelf very well. Let's set up for a game and I'll take you out on the high seas. The goal of the game. Your adventure in Galecrest has but one goal, wealth above all. The winner is the player who can amass the most money over three voyages. The first voyage takes place over four rounds, or days, and each subsequent voyage gets longer by one round. Expect your first game to go about 90 minutes or so with four to five players, slightly longer with six. After everyone's got their sea legs, you can play the game in the same player counts in about an hour or so. But how will I gain my ill-gotten loot? By following the pirate's code. Set up for each round, we'll have just one player shuffling all 40 of their cards and then dealing out six of them face up. Each other player will then look through their ordered deck and pull out those same six, so everybody's working with the same crew. Once everyone's manifest is set, each player will choose one of those six to play for the day, placing it face down in front of them. With everyone's choice made, reveal all the chosen cards and place them on the island in numerical order. Like so. Ties for nearly everything are broken by reputation, tracked here on the board. You'll note that just because we're set up for a three-player game, we're still using all six markers. That's important. Once the order is set, you'll start from the port side of the track and move starboard, carrying out any day actions that appear on the cards marked with a sunshine. Each player does theirs in order, and when each player is done, you'll snake backwards for dusk. Unless your chosen character prohibits you from doing so, you'll take a loot token from that day's box and then carry out any dusk abilities on your card before returning it to your ship. Once you're back at the start, if any loot tokens remain, put them back in the bag and then look for all characters in your ship for their knight abilities. Now, with five cards in your hand, you'll repeat the same process three more times for the first voyage. That complete, you'll run through the end of voyage actions listed here on the board. Perform any and all anchor abilities from the loot tokens you've acquired and the characters still left on your ship. Count up your doubloons and then add that number to your treasure chest counter. That money is now safely stowed and cannot be touched by your opponents. Any character still on your ship will go into your graveyard, dark in it, but the cards in your hand will stay there, ready and able to serve on the next voyage. The next voyage begins with the same player from before, dealing out six new random crewmates from their deck, everyone gathering those together from theirs and adding them to their hands. And then, remember I told you about the reputation track? Each voyage, including the first, begins with players gaining starting doubloons equal to their spot on the track. The more people think of you, the less money you start with. Odd, but it's a balanced thing. Libertalia is primarily a game about recognizing combos and taking advantage of situational information. While you can have a pretty good idea of what's in your opponent's hands, if you try to overanalyze and predict exactly what they're going to do, the game will grind to a halt. The last time we took a look at a Stonemaier title, Red Rising, some of you might recall that my main criticism was that there were just too many cards and too many possibilities to know at all what you were trying to do. 
Lipertalia, while an earlier design, feels more like what that game should have been. Mori's design gives you limited options to prioritize both the actions on the cards as well as the possibilities of getting the loot token you need. Giving the first pick of the tokens to the player who got their daytime action last is a nice sword's edge to balance on, as you'll need to decide which is more important. Additionally, while the theme of the game is piracy, there's precious little player interaction to feed it. You're not fighting each other for loot very often, you're just getting there first? There's also no exploration mechanic or push your luck elements here, both, in my opinion, quintessential tropes for pirates. Don't get me wrong, this doesn't make Libertalia a bad game. Far from it. I really like it as a non-party game for six players. It's just, it's not really a game for someone excited about the theme. My recommendation for Libertalia may make you feel a little seasick from all the wishing and washing. It's just that this game comes so close to being outstanding. I love the hand management aspects, and giving everyone the same assets to work with is inspired. Keeping a leftover crew from a single voyage for a later one and using it when everyone else has sent that particular animal to Davy Jones's locker feels so great and it's the closest you'll come to the push your luck I wanted earlier. Banking that another crew member will show up to make this one work just the way you want it to can make you look like a genius. Where Libertalia loses its bravado is at smaller player counts. Putting three in front of this game, despite that being our usual demo setup, actually takes some of the jockeying for position on the island away. The fewer players sending their crew to the board means that each player's general position means less overall. We've played this at five, and I think that's where it really shines. The other thing to watch out for here is that new players will be completely lost as to what to look for, so anytime you're adding a greenhorn to the game, they're at a disadvantage from the moment the main sail drops. Libertalia, while selling massive theme with the overall feel of the game, ultimately misses as a quote-unquote pirate game, but sails mightily as a highly entertaining hand management game with four or more players. Let's go through our checklist before I give you my final thoughts. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. The eight-page rulebook is succinct, but oftentimes too much so. We had to dig and dig to find out the difference between your hand and your ship. It wasn't all immediately clear. Also, there's no character card clarification in the book, so if you have any questions about how a particular character was intended to act, you'll have to rely on table rulings. Fortunately, most are very clear. The rulebook also uses second-person pronouns you and yours throughout. Iconography clear. Matching up the varying icons to their effects on the board is easier than navigating by sextant, but will require constantly keeping yourself updated on what each one means given the board state. Still, once the wind is in your sails, it's a pretty marginal issue. Packaging well done. Yes, I love the organization in the box, and there's plenty of room for everything to breathe a little without opening the box to find a giant mess. On the table, good representation. The 40 character cards have a good mix of masculine and feminine animal art, as well as some non-binary characters. Overall, I love the aesthetic of a crew made up of anthropomorphic animals making their way on long voyages. Component quality. The loot tokens are very nice bakelite or acrylic, about the size of a Starburst candy. Not nearly as chewy, though. The cards have a decent linen finish to them, and the wooden reputation markers are a nice touch. Replay value. High. With 40 cards in each player's deck, synergies are bound to rise and fall in your games like the tides. The more games you play, the more you'll be able to sniff out fun combos and really start turning the screws on your opponents. Fun to lose. Only sort of. Each of the voyages will have you banking your doubloons at the end, which puts them out of reach from your opponents. All it takes is two or three good voyages for a player to be able to sit back and coast to victory. If your games are tight, though, the tension is delicious throughout. I enjoyed Libertalia as a high player count game, but like it somewhat less if your table is two or three players. I get that there's an overall pirate theme, but it doesn't always feel very piratey. Gar. That said, you can get six players who can stay engaged the whole time without a runaway winner. Libertalia is worth your doubloons. As always, I'm Nicholas reminding you to help protect the game population. Always sleeve your cards. <laughs>
Hey everyone, if you liked our video, please hit that sub button and ring the bell for notifications. Check out all of our other offerings at goodluckhighfive.com and please consider becoming a patron of the channel over at patreon.com slash glhfmagic. It helps us keep making videos, reviews, and podcasts. You can become a member for any dollar amount. We're also always looking for new games to review. You can reach me at glhfnicholas at gmail.com. You can follow me, Captain N the Game Master, at CaptainNGM on Twitter and Instagram and follow the channel at GLHF Magic. Remember, please shop at your local game store whenever possible. Until next time, I'm Nicholas, and good luck. High five.